Welcome back to this five-part series on strengthening of reinforced concrete beam with CFRP bars using Abacus. In first four videos, I went through all eight steps to create and run the models. These eight steps include part, property, assembly, step, interaction. If you have missed any of these videos, the link is somewhere around here. In this fifth and last video, I will talk about how do we interpret results and how do we view these results properly. The series is divided into five parts. In the first part, I will talk about creating geometry. Second is about material properties and sections. Third is about assembling those parts. Fourth is about meshing, loading, boundary conditions, contact interactions, and job submission. Finally, fifth and last part is about viewing the results. This is a problem that I'm going to solve today. The details are given in this book. These are the material properties. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy, and examine life. Fifth and final part is about post-processing. In post-processing, we view results. And here I will focus on how do we interpret results, how to plot load deflection curve, and how to see contour plots. Let's go away and have a look at results. Here I would like to have a look at one misses stress. The deformation scale factor is one. I'm going to change the scale factor to 10. In that way, you can see the deformation pattern. And if you wanted to see how a stress is developing, for example, in concrete, the maximum stress yield was 24. So you will simply change the stress here, say 24. And here you will say zero, apply. Then you can see that top portion is crushing and bottom portion, nothing is happening because we had concrete jacketing. It is preventing it from cracking. If you wanted to have a look at the strain profile, then again, simply go to limits here and change the limit to 0 0.002, which is the strain at which concrete starts to crack. It's a failure strain. And here I'm interested in PEQ, which is the strain at failure. And here you can see that the failure is a shear failure. So failure is happening in this shear span and which really matches with the research paper of the authors. Here you can see, I think we're roughly considering SP6, although dimensions in the paper are slightly different, but you can see the failure is shear failure. The load at which cracking starts is 30 and the maximum load is about 60 kN. But in our analysis, we don't get these results. And in the book, they suggest that we should be plotting the average results. But in my opinion, we should be plotting the total load applied. Here, this is the average load versus displacement curve in the book. And I will show you that uh, the process that we have followed, it, it will give you exactly the same results. But what they've done in the book here is that they've taken the average of the load that is applied at the loading point. But in my opinion, it should be the total load. But total load, when you work out from finite element modeling, it is way beyond what we get in the experiment. Now, why does this happen? It is something for us to consider <laughs> in future videos. And also you, you can try out uh, concrete damage parameters to make it work. So let me plot the load versus deflection curves. And here you can change the limit to limits to auto limits. And I will quickly go to auto ones. And I will go to XY data. And here I want to plot the history output. Click here. And first I want to plot the deflections. The deflections plot and I will save them as average and I will say disp click OK and then I will plot total force and plot and I will plot them as average average and I will say force AVG and click OK and now I will plot the force displacement curve go to operate on data continue and I will say combine and displacement and force I will simply multiply it with minus one so that it comes as positive. Plot the expression. It has to be outside the double quotes, minus one. Plot the expression, save as force AVG versus disp. Now here, the analysis stops at 12 millimeter. The force displacement 
and you can see that the maximum load attained is 21.8 say about 22 kilonewton this is the average load but in my opinion it should be the total load but when we plot the total load it is way beyond what we get in the research paper so let's see how we can plot the total load go to history output again and go to continue and save as i will save it as sum and then i will say force tot means force total now here again you can plot total force versus displacement but the total force is quite a lot so here you can see it reaches up to 0.25 into 10 raised 6 which means that it is about 250 kilonewtons now, 250 kilonewtons is really very high load i'm assuming it is sp6 specimen in experiment the failure load is 60 kilonewton and this is the experiment this is their companion research paper in that research paper i'm assuming that this is the specimen they've tried to model but certainly there are differences in terms of spacing between cfrp bars the main conclusion here is that the software has its limitations so we have to use a software with a bit of a caveat and when we try to optimize the values or parameters in the software we can exactly compare it with the experiment and in my view here uh, we can use the crushing parameters and cracking parameters it means that define tensile damage and define the compressive damage and when we use these two values then concrete is going to crack at appropriate positions and as a result you will get that softening part this is one strategy the other strategy can be that use abacus explicit because in abacus explicit it can deal with a lot of contact interactions and the analysis is not, is not going to stop but we have to ensure that we are applying loading really very slowly and we are comparing the energies to ensure that the results are static and in that way by using a buckus explicit with slow load application we can obtain the results that we want this is something for you to consider uh, when comparing the value with the experiments ideally it should be validated with the experiments and software has always limitations it is you who is controlling the parameters and it is you who is understanding the, the process of numerical modeling and its limitations once the validation is done with a lot of models then we can say that yes the model is really doing well in terms of comparison with the experiments and theoretical calculations Thanks for watching this lecture today. I'm going to see you in my next lecture. If you have missed any of these videos, please go back to check them out or click on any of the end screen to watch them.